Hey, look, the Charlos are going to be taking on Sergei Derevchenko and Jason Rosario come September 26th. We're going to look at the tape, do a breakdown in this video. Hi, this is Joe Cortez. You're watching Showbiz, The Adult. Oh, this is Bernard Hopkins, Showbiz, The Adult. I'm out. Oops! Up off net? <laughs> yeah! Up off net! <laughs> What's up, my people? This is Showbiz, The Adult. All right, man, look. Yeah, let's take a closer look at the Charlos versus Sergey Derevchenko and Jason Rosario. A full breakdown of their fights, September 26th. Oops! Alright, man! Look! Just next month, for boxing fans, we're going to be given a huge gift when Jamel Charlo takes on Jason Rosario to become unified. As far as Jamal Charlo, he'll be taking on the extremely dangerous Sergey Derevchenko. Oops! But first... I want to say this. These two fights are just dangerous. And to be honest, I, I just never saw it coming. When it comes to Jamel Charlo, this road to become unified seems to be the one that was the least likely. I mean, this fight is for the WBC, for the WBA, and the IBF. And it's Jamel Charlo versus Jason Rosario. Whoops. Look, I remember a time okay, not that long ago, where Swift Jared Hurd was calling out Jamel Charlo to become unified. Then he said that he was going to move up to take on Jamal Charlo, claiming that he's going to knock out both brothers. But as we all know, J-Rock, he stopped that whole plan, defeating Swift Jared Hurd. And Jamel Charlo, he lost his title by decision to Tony Harrison. Since then, Jamel Charlo went on to defeat Tony Harrison in the rematch, and Jason Rosario defeated J-Rock Julian Williams. And Jason Rosario is the type of guy you just did not want to have the belts. I mean, this guy is dangerous. He's gritty, and he's an old-school fighter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Jamel Charlo, his resume is looking great too. I mean, the guy is on a roll fighting the likes of Trout and Lubin and Jorge Coda, Tony Harrison twice, and now Jason Rosario. I mean, this guy is on a roll taking on all comers. And so is Rosario. He fought Jorge Coda in a war, beating Jorge Coda by split decision, knocking out J-Rock, and now taking on Jamel Charlo. Showbiz the coffee. Black? Two sugars? Now, when it comes to Jamal Charlo versus Sergey Derevchenko, I really didn't see this fight coming either. Because Sergey Derevchenko is just one of those guys you just kind of want to stay away from. But Jamal Charlo, I mean, this guy, he claims that he wants to take them all on. And Sergey Derevchenko would be the perfect guy to say, hey, look, if I defeat Sergey Derevchenko unquestionably, then I deserve to be mentioned as a no-brainer fight for the likes of Triple G and Canelo Alvarez. Now, Jamal Charlo, his resume is also looking good, but just not as good as Jamal Charlo. He knocked out J-Rock himself, and he beat Trout, and he's taken on and defeated Korobov. But he's had his Brandon Adams and he's had his Dennis Hogan's in between time. Now he's taking on Sergey Derevchenko, one heck of a fighter. Sergey Derevchenko, on the other hand, he's on a roll as well, taking on the likes of Danny Jacobs and Triple G. So these two boys are going to be fighting each other for the WBC title. I think it's going to be one heck of a fight. And that's the Black Two Sugars. So first, let's do a breakdown of Jamel Charlo versus Jason Rosario. For Jamel Charlo, I want to look at the fight he had with Jorge Coda. Why? Because Jason Rosario had a war with Jorge Coda. And when I looked at that fight, those two guys kind of mirrored each other. Yes, Jason Rosario seemed to be more guarded, seemed to be a little bit more slick. But still, both men, Jorge Coda and Jason Rosario, are counter punchers. And they fight at a thinking man's pace. So since those two fighters kind of mirrored each other, I want to look at Jamel Charlo versus Jorge Cota. 12 
in the super welterweight division. Look at how Jamel Charlo, look at where he keeps his right hand. Look how high he keeps his right hand. That's the thing about Jamel Charlo. Not too many people talk about how responsible he is. And I'm saying defensively, just as a fighter, good right hand from Jamel Charlo. Now, I think here Jamel Charlo was seeing what I'm seeing. Look at how low Jorge Cota holds his left hand. Oh, good, good, good jab. Good jab. That's what I like about, now look at that. And that's what I like about Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo is always in a position to land a punch of his own. When he was in the heat of the fire, he jumped out and he came back in. Let's look at this again. Look at the way uh, uh, Coda expand. Now watch what Jamel Charlo does. Right there, you see? Now he's in the fire, he stays in the fire. He leaves and he comes back to the fire. You see that? Jamel Charlo always wanna be in the heat. He's trying to time a big shot of his own. Oh, good right hand by Jamel Charlo. Good jab to the body by Jamel Charlo. Now you look at how responsible Jamel Charlo is, like I said, not just with the guard, but the fact that he's staying behind his jab to the body of Jorge Cota. Good combination by Cota. And once again, Jamel Charlo, he stayed in the heat of the fire. Look at how Jamel Charlo is circling. He's circling towards the power hand of Cota. Which, that surprises me a little bit because Jamel Charlo, he works with Errol Spence a lot. And we all know Errol Spence, he fights Southpaw. It looks like Jamel Charlo got all the data that he needed from the first round. He's setting up that right hand. There it is again, right hand again. You can see it. So here, Jorge, he switched to Southpaw. Boom! Right hand again. He knows how to land that right hand. Why? Because look at the left hand of Jorge Cota. Oh, good right hand by Jamel Charlo. Now, like I said, he was looking for that right hand. Now, he's not doing much, though, uh, uh, before throwing that perfect uh, uh, right hand. He's flicking the jab more now here, but that second round was a snoozer. First round, a bit of a snoozer. That's what I don't like about Jamel Charlo, looking for the perfect opportunity to throw uh, his right hand, something that he's been calculating. Good right hand to the body by Jorge. Oh, God! God! <laughs> Guess I was wrong. <laughs> Oh my God, good right hand by Jamel Charlo. Said it's here, bam, oh, he threw it again. Oh my God, oh my God. When Jamel Charlo saw that the right hand was there, he was sitting there like, look, I'm going to put all my chips on this right hand. Now Jamel Charlo, he didn't really set it up with the jab, so to speak, but he set it up with his feet. He had himself in position, like I said, to throw a hard shot. When his fighter expands, he contracts. He stays right there in the heat of the fire. And boom, boom, right hand right there. Now that time he set it up with the jab. Now there's a few things I can take from that fight, okay? Uh, one thing is Jamel Charlo, he stays extremely uh, responsible with his guard. He's always extremely thin to the side. The first round he was shooting his jab, but over the course of those three rounds, he wasn't really that busy. Why? Because he knew what he was looking for. He was looking for that right hand. He already looked at Jorge Cota. He collected his data and he knew which punch would be the perfect punch for him to land. So there's pros and cons to that. Jamel Charlo being a smart fighter, being able to look at his opponent, break him down, and knowing which punches and what to do to actually get the job done. But at the same time, in between time, Jamel Charlo wasn't that busy. He's looking for the one thing that he already said in his mind that would get the job done. So in my opinion, Jamel Charlo can lose rounds in between time doing that. And, and you kind of saw that in the second fight with Tony Harrison. Tony Harrison was just running away with the fight a bit, kind of outboxing Jamel Charlo. But Jamel Charlo, he kind of knew what it took to get the job done, what kind of pressure to apply, what kind of punches to throw wide, looping shots, how to just break down Tony Harrison. And he was going to stay doing that and he wasn't going to change from that because he felt that that was the game. Plan. Now, when it comes to Jason Rosario, I decided Rosario versus Julian J. Rock Williams. 
Why? Because J-Rock, he's a good puncher, a very good athlete, and he fights with the standard boxing style, something a bit similar to Jamel Charlo. Also, <laughs> it was Jason Rosario's first shot at the title, and he rose to the occasion, so you can kind of see what he does under pressure because he wasn't fighting at home. Heck, he was fighting at J-Rock's home. Let's look at the tape. Look at the high guard of J-Rock. See how thin he is? Very standard boxing style, like Jamel Charlo. Now you see the, 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 the countering ability of Rosario. Good right hand from Rosario. Look at Rosario's punch selection. And he always punch once he gets hit. But you see that right hand? You see that right hand by J-Rock? Look at the guard of Rosario. Right hand by J-Rock landed again. Some side to side movement and get that jab working. Now it's very vulnerable when he's trying to get you out of there. <laughs> look at Rosario. Oh God, just look at it. Oh, look at the jab. Oh my God, behind the ear. Look, look how floppy he gets. Look how floppy he gets when he's trying to finish you. Look how his arms, very wide. He looks extremely vulnerable to me when he's trying to open up and get you out of there. Now look at the punch selection here. Watch the uppercut. He throw, bam! Oh, that was just magnificent. Now this is uh, what I take from that fighting Jason Rosario and how uh, that matchup would look against Jamel Charlo. What I like from Jason Rosario is how patient he is. He's extremely patient. But instinctively, when he gets punched, he throw a punch back, meaning that he's a natural counterpuncher. And those things are good. He also has a very good chin. What I didn't like was how low he holds his guard. His left hand is pretty low. And we saw Jamel Charlo, once he finds where to throw that right hand, he's going to take advantage of that. Also, when Rosario opens up, he throws arm shots, wide shots, and he leaves his head pretty exposed, though J-Rock couldn't take advantage of it. I saw opportunities there where if someone were to weather the storm, they can probably catch Rosario during his onslaught. I think that doesn't look good for Jason Rosario against Jamel Charlo. I think with his low left hand, Jamel Charlo finds the right hand of his own. And Jamel Charlo, he never really retreats. He stays within the heat of the fire, actually inviting you to throw a lot of punches because he believes in his own guard being tight enough. And also, he thinks that that's a great opportunity for him to throw punches of his own, countering his opponent. I think Jamel Charlo will take advantage of all those things when taking on Jason Rosario. Now, when looking at the matchup, my favorite matchup out the two, Jamal Charlo versus Sergey Derevchenko, when it comes to Jamal Charlo, I would like to look at the Matt Korobov fight. Korobov and Sergey Derevchenko, to me, I actually think that they're quite similar. Yeah, Korobov is a southpaw, but their fighting styles are very similar. Both of them are pretty slick. Moving their heads at the right time, countering at the right time, got enough pop, punching power to make you pay. Their time spent in the amateurs are from around the same region. I mean, we all know that Russia and Ukraine, they're not the best of buzz, but their origins are from the same kind of region. And when I talk about amateur fighting, I think this Charlo versus Matt Korba fight is just a perfect fight when trying to break down Charlo versus Sergey Delvachenko. Let's look at the tape now. Look at Jamal Charlo, what a schooled fighter he is. His head movement, even when uh, his opponent isn't throwing any punches, he doesn't make himself a steady target. Look at how he's always moving his head, keeping his guard high, staying very slim, not making himself a big target. Look at the jab, the double jab from Jamal Charlo. That's one thing that people just doesn't bring, they don't bring up enough. Jamal Charlo has a great jab. Good jab again. Now that right hand to the body was set up by that jab from Jamal Charlo. Now if you look at Matt Korobov, he's not really bothered by Jamal Charlo's jab or anything that Jamal Charlo is doing. He's kind of collecting data of his own. Look at the way he's able to be elusive, right, without actually being quick. But it's his positioning, it's his understanding, his ring generalship, knowing exactly what to do. That was a good left uppercut from Matt Korobov. Now what's this, the fifth round? Good lead left, straight, 
by Korbov. And look, now you see Jamar Charlo. He's opening up, right? He got hit solid and he opened up. Now he wants some get back. It was just one straight left by Korobov, and it just made Jamar Charlo light up. And there you go, he opens himself up to be countered by Matt Korobov. Oh man, just a very slick fighter in Korobov. That was a nice punch selection by Jamar Charlo. Good left hand by Korobov. Good combination by Korobov. Now he's throwing those body shots and it looks like Jamar Charlo doesn't like it so much. Like I said, he can get emotionally compromised. He doesn't like what he's feeling so he's going to try to deliver it right back to him and sometimes that works in the hands of a slick fighter a thinking fighter somebody like matt korobov now these were the middle rounds where matt korobov was just taking advantage look at straight left by korobov just taking advantage of jamal charlo he can't get away from the straight right and the straight left and he he couldn't get away from it there now, this is the 10th round of the fight. Uh, in my opinion, I think the fight is close to even. I think Matt Korobov, though, is slightly ahead. Good jab by Jamal Charlo. And that's the best punch Jamal Charlo actually has for this fight. Um, oh, God, good combination. They both tried to just really land big shots on each other. Both of them missed, but good combination by Jamal Charlo. And good jab again by Jamal Charlo. And that's what you could kind of see. When you look at Korobov face and you look at Jamal Charlo face, Korobov looked like he's taking more of a beating. Why? Because Jamal Charlo is just bigger and more physical than Korobov. When Jamal Charlo is using his physicality, he can really, really wear down his opponent if he keeps the pressure up on his opponent. Now in the final round, you can kind of see Jamal Charlo just really putting the pressure on him. More and more pressure. He kept the pressure, sustained it over the championship rounds. That's a good look for Jamal Charlo. Look at Charlo. Look like he has a little bit more life than Korobov. And Korobov, the older fighter, I mean, Jamal Charlo, he's younger. And you kind of expect this. And you look now, Korobov, he, oh, good double uh, uh, left by Korobov. But Korobov isn't quite as busy. Uh, as he was in those middle rounds. So he had a spark. It was like a hill, right? He started off kind of slow in the middle rounds. He peaked. Oh, good right hand by Jamal. Look. And now he's starting to, he's on the decline. Oh, good combination by Jamal. And that decline that I'm talking about, I have to really give the credit to Jamal Charlo for being a cause of that decline. Now, the positives I can take here from Jamal Charlo is this. Jamal Charlo, he has a wonderful jab, and he never got away from it from all 12 rounds. When you saw in the 12th round, Jamal Charlo, he was still busy with the jab, shooting a jab, a single jab, double jab, triple jab, jab upstairs, jab downstairs. He just stayed responsible when it came to his jab. Another thing is Jamal Charlo, he still understands that it's a fight. He wasn't just technically being a sound boxer. He also knew when to fight and it was those moments that really gave him the victory here putting the pressure on Matt Korobov breaking him down because to be quite honest Korobov was the more slick boxer and Korobov was kind of playing him like a puppet come the middle rounds so sometimes you got to turn it into a fight just to see and as you saw Jamar Charlo was the more physical fighter and that physicality broke down Matt Korobov what I didn't like was this it was very easy to puppeteer Jamar Charlo there. If you're a slick enough fighter and if you hit Jamar Charlo with a good shot or two, Jamar Charlo, he's going to want to give you that receipt. And in doing so, you could kind of expect that receipt. And in expecting that receipt, you can actually give a receipt of your own. You can make Jamar Charlo pay. And that's what Matt Korobov was doing, playing him like a puppet. Now, let's see if Sergey Derevchenko can do that. Let's look at Sergey Derevchenko versus Danny Jacobs. The reason why I chose Danny Jacobs is because Danny Jacobs, he got the stature kind of like a Jamar Charlo. He works behind the jab as well. And he's a physical middleweight. So let's look at that fight. Now you can already see that Sergey Derevchenko is just a more busy fighter than Matt Korobov. What I mean by that is, look at his feet, look at his movement, look at his pressure. He's a quicker fighter. Still slick, but he's just a, a, a more turned up version of Matt Korobov. And just like uh, Charlo, look at how Danny Jacobs, he's to the side, making himself very thin. Look at his right hand. His right guard is nice and responsible. Good feint by Derevchenko. Good feint again by Derevchenko. 
right? Trying to play Danny Jacobs like a puppet, kind of trying to make Danny Jacobs go where he wants him to go. Good right hand off the break. Good left hook. So, Derevchenko is more of a fighter than Matt Korobov. Korobov is slick, a hard puncher. When it comes to Derevchenko, he also has, you know, a, a grit and a, a, a fighter's type of mentality, not just slick. Now, here's the, the, the middle rounds. This is uh, round seven. And you see Derevchenko really chasing Danny Jacobs now, pressing forward. Good jab by Danny Jacobs. Experience and season expense. Good hand movement by Derevchenko. Good pressure. Pressure with his feet. Not really punching, but pressure with his feet. Good hand movement by Derevchenko. You know, look at him. Work his way in. He, he, he can't get hit. Hand movement is just very good. Good right hand by Derevchenko. Good combination by Derevchenko. Good right hand. So he, he knows when to be the aggressor, and he also knows when to counter. And look at Derevchenko right in his guts, right between his shoulders. Good right hand. And he's fighting now. Now he's fighting. He was boxing from the outside a bit, moving his head, doing those things. But look at him. Now he's fighting. Look at Jacobs. That jab does pop right off the forehead of Derevchenko. Derevchenko, uh, it looks as though he can get touched by the jab if the jab is busy enough. Now, now here's the final round. Look at this. Derevchenko has uh, uh, not been discouraged from having put the pressure on uh, uh, Danny Jacobs. Oh, good double. Oh, good combination by Derevchenko. Good combination by Derevchenko. Just, just very busy. Very busy. And many people looked at this fight and kind of thought the fight was extremely close. Some people actually gave the fight to Derevchenko. Jacobs. A oh, good body shot. Derevchenko is never discouraged. He's going to keep the pressure on. Break you down systematically. God, this is just beautiful action for both men. Beautiful action. Beautiful action. And Derevchenko not discouraged. Still throwing his hands. Good combination. Good jab by Derevchenko. Good jab again. Oh, oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at Danny Jacobs' attitude. Always love his attitude. Oh, my God. Look at how they swing on each other. Beautiful. Beautiful fight. Beautiful fight. Beautiful fight. Now, here's what I like from Sergei Derevchenko. Sergei Derevchenko got good punching power. He got good head movement. I like his countering ability, and I like when he is aggressive. He's aggressive when necessary. Derevchenko shows that he can be gritty. He can be this warrior, be this fighter. But on top of that, he can have great punch selection, be a slick fighter, move his head well, and stay on the inside. What I didn't like is Sergei Derevchenko can get a bit antsy. And in this fight, I think he should have been antsy towards the 12th round but he was showing himself to be antsy pretty early. Danny Jacobs was able to take advantage of that with his straight punching, straight jabs, straight right hands. I think Jamal Charlo kind of does the same thing against Sergei Derevchenko. I think he stays behind his jab, and I think those jabs will be effective against Sergei Derevchenko. The right hand of Danny Jacobs found his spot, and I think the right hand from Jamal Charlo is going to find a spot as well. Danny Jacobs was also the bigger man. Jamal Charlo, he's going to be the bigger man against Sergey Derevchenko. I think Sergey Derevchenko versus Jamal Charlo is going to be a war. I think as Jamal Charlo turns up, Sergey Derevchenko is going to turn up. I think Sergey Derevchenko will hit Jamal Charlo with good shots. And when doing so, Jamal Charlo is going to try to respond. I think we're going to see more of what we saw in the 12th round with Danny Jacobs and Sergey Derevchenko. I think you're going to see that type of action earlier in this fight with Sergey Sergey Derevchenko and Jamal Charlo. Both Jamal Charlo and Sergey Derevchenko got solid chins. Jamal Charlo, we know he can absorb a punch. Sergey Derevchenko, he proved that he can absorb a punch by taking those shots that he took from Triple G. And quite frankly, if this fight lasts the full 12 rounds, I think a bit's going to be taken from both fighters. I'm talking about they're going to need some time off after this fight. I think in this boxing match, a fight's going to break out. And I think both of those guys are skilled, and I think both of them are going to be extremely comfortable when the fight breaks out. Whoever, which one of the two moves their head the best and land the more flush shots, and I'm talking about repetitively, is going to be the one that will be victorious at the end of the night. I hope you like this breakdown. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. And show biz the adult. I'm out.